Hello people of the Imperium and welcome back to part number two of the Let's Build the Ultramarine series. Yes, there's a ton of paint so far you guys, like more than you guys can see right now. But as I said, the next time you see these guys is when they're all primed. And which as you can see here, he's primed and ready to go. Just missed one or two little areas, but just as a reference, this guy is my one of my first ultramarines. that the symbols on the shoulders are hand done. Now that guy I just used uh, blue I had in the Tiananmen series. Uh, a home created kind of a no no oil kind of deal and so yeah okay so I have the Citadel painting app on my iPad right now that's on my lap. So I'm going to go through all the paint slash recommended paint slash equipment and all that kind of stuff you guys will see possibly see me use throughout this series or the these this video. So let me clear this off a little bit here. So of course I have water over here. Uh, special brush cleaner here. actually have two palettes. Just with these were dirt cheap at an art store. Of course it's preferable to have a wet palette because you're wasting less less paint. But yeah. Do have a paint gatherer slash stirrer. There's the stirring side. I have two of those. I have a few droppers of different sizes. And I've got a whole selection of paint brushes right back there. As you can see, some of these are a little bit curious about all this. So 
my gene stealer brood lord for my high flute corn. Yes. I created my own high fleet if you haven't seen that video. Link will be in down in the description down below. You see why I named him that. And I also have the box nearby as well. As well I have the website open on my computer. Just in case I need to take a look at something. And. I do have weathering stuff, but I'm not going to really be using it for this guy. What else? And paint. I do have the um, Kamiya putty. I want to use this as little as possible. Because if you look. So this is not something to be played around with, it's not even open. I will be using it for one of my pyramids, so I know that for sure. So let's go over the paints. So for the captain's helmet, I have Mephiston Red is going to be my edge highlight actually. I do not have either of the other colors. And I have uh, Corn Red as well. I'm hoping these two colors will I think it'll work, but and I have Doom Brawl Doom Ball Brown for inscriptions on the purity seals. I have a shade of Carbone for Grimston. This one, however you say it. Trust me, there's going to be a lot of paints here. Screaming. Screamer Pink. Emperor's Children. White Scar. Liberator Gold. Power. Power Witch Flesh Rakarth Flesh Agrox Earthshade Eshen Grey Kalgar Blue Aryak Armory Gold Dawnstone Libre or Retributor Armor Lead Belcher 
and no oil, as we saw earlier. Parisian gray. Reddish. Gray blue. Which you can get this in a spray can if you want to be really lazy. And just do a coat of that over everything. Instead of black or gray or whatever other primers you guys may have. Franklin Flesh Shade. Abandoned Black. And so kind of an edge highlight and a trick I like to do. I have my very, very trusted and loved Water Aluminum XF16 from Tiananmen. have a ball on it and I have clear green and I have clear red as well so as you see most of them are citadel paints 99% of them are citadel I only have three other paints But yeah, let me just slide these all off to one side here for a minute. Just this way, I can tell exactly which paints I want, which paints I need to work with, which paints I don't. I have one of the Citadel painting handles, which is very handy as you can tell. But of course with me being new to everything here, All that I do is expect me to do the best I can, and that's about it. Now let's see, let's get this guy on. I can hold him upside down. Keep him around. He's not coming off. Love this handle. So, I'm gonna grab a couple brushes here that I think I might need. So, as they say on Warhammer TV, work from the largest area down to the smallest. His armor is a pretty big area. Let's start out with that. So we will grab our McGrag Blue. Actually, I'm going to grab. that I got for mixing paint 
Even so this is a brand new paint, I want to mix it up really well here. Surprisingly, the best brushes I found Tiananmen modeling brush number one but I think I got this a very small brush and a larger brush about three bucks and I've used this to put on like the Marco Set and Marco Sol and all that stuff and it's still working like no tomorrow. I love it. But because we're gonna go with a bigger area, I'm gonna go more with my small dry brush actually. a different kind of silk I actually use the clinging silk oh and and have paper towels nearby I'm just saying so I'm gonna grab some of this out and put it into my palette Also put one of the BBs before I forget in the blue that we just opened up. Make sure you close it fully, like completely. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of water. As Duncan always says, it's better to do multiple thin coats instead of one thick lumpy coat. So I've got my paint thinned down a little bit here. And so I have paint thinned down quite a bit. Let's see how it goes on. See how careful I'm being of everything. So I'm going to do multiple coats like this, just making sure that I get everything. And then I'll bring you guys back once that's done. I'll see you guys in a minute. And we're also going to actually paint them all the exact same way for now. So, yeah. Be back when they're all finished. Okay, so as you can see, we have a nice base coat on all of them. 
And by the way, for these guys. I've literally taken a little bit of painter's tape, put a number on it, correlating to them. Then on the bottom, so this one correlates to number seven, so I know exactly which one goes with which. So we're going to put all of them off to the side for a moment here. Now I'm going to be using a small layer brush. You know, always be careful when you open paints, especially this kind. They catch it alright, like they can really skin ya. That's what that is. Who knew painting dangerous? So we are gonna be doing the no oil. Oh Brand new. Oh, yes. Now, I'm actually going to take some of it out with a dry dropper. Which actually worked extremely well. The regular old eyedropper. Now, because this guy has flesh on him, he's going to be a little bit different. Basically, you just want to put it in areas like this in order to bring it out. Basically, we're just going to be painting it in. Bring out all the ridges. Pretty well what we're doing right now. And also areas. Just like this on the backpack here. So pretty well we're panel lining with paint. So let me do all of them here. And then I will bring you guys back when I'm done. Okay, so as you can see here, going over him with the no oil. Now, actually, I am going to bring a little bit of Gundam into this because these actually represent what we're going to be doing with this guy so well when you really think about it. So with Gundam, there's a whole bunch of little lines and stuff like that that you can see here that you use a Gundam marker or some kind of something thinned usually or people use oil paints and all that kind of stuff 
to do this I basically go over the pieces in the little grooves but that's exactly what we've done here with the no oil technically technically speaking only we painted it on instead of just putting it on and then letting the paint do letting the substance do the work for you or the paints do the work for you Sorry about that. But basically you can kind of see that this is actually the stage we're at with this guy right now. So what I'm going to do, you do not do this with these guys. Do not use pure thinner on these guys when you have painted them. We'll just strip off the paint. I'm just gonna get a little bit of enamel thinner. I believe it is. So two drops on a cotton bud. That is literally all I need. But basically, we are going to be going back to the base coat. Just like this piece here. We're going to go over the whole thing. But we're going to leave the null oil in the grooves. Okay, same thing here. Just gonna leave that panel line color in the grooves. But we're gonna clean it up everywhere else and brighten it up. So that is pretty well exactly what we're gonna be doing. Only using paints instead of thinners on plastic. So, again, we're going to go back to the McCrag Blue. McCrag Blue, however you say it. Come on. There we go. Always want to hear that ball shaking around a little bit in there. Just opening up my water. A little bit dirty water, but it's not too bad. I painted with a lot worse. I'll get my brush ready here. As usual, I used a little bit of the brush cleaner on it to keep that nice point that it has on it that you can barely see. knocking some of the paint
you don't need very much on your paintbrush. Now this is also kind of the time where if you've forgotten something, go back over it. But basically we're just going to start going over the areas again. But like areas like this, we're not going to go fully to the end. Just want to leave a little bit of that dark line in there. We're gonna go. We're gonna do that throughout the whole model here, which I will be doing that later. But I've already done that nine other times. So. Let me just make sure this paint is fully closed. A little bit of a way to burn. But now we're going to move on to an edge highlight of the Caligar Blue. Just grab one of my other Marines here. It's one of our normal ones. Get my. Steel balls already, and I'm going to be using the longest, thinnest paintbrush I have, which is this guy here. So I bring him to a point, he gets really nice. And this is just an artist, artist loft one. So, shake up this other paint really well. Now this is where having the Games Workshop website up really would help. Just to see where they have done all the edge highlights. And also use the box art as well. That'll help you out a lot. Just takes a little bit. Of it making sure I have a nice point. Basically on these very divine edges. Oh, that's a little thick. And go as light as you can. Just trying to bring out the edge. I'm 
more like that there instead of that. That you can always clean up later with the base coat. Another layer of base coat quickly. See, you want to do that to all the edges. And this is one of those times where you just got to be patient and really look carefully. So I need to do that for all the models, including our captain here. And then we'll probably have a special little segment on just the captain, I think. Yes, because we'll need to do some stuff on him before we can even start doing a lot of stuff on a lot of the other guys and we cannot really start the golds or the silvers or anything or the black areas or any, anything really till we get this head done which will be fun first one So I will be back once if all of that is finished and then there'll be one more edge highlight that we'll do using the exact same method only we're just going to do the very sharpest edges. We're at the corner of the helmet here. Or maybe down here a little bit. Maybe on the nose ridge there. And you will want to go around these as well. With, by hand painting them very carefully. So... As I say, this part is going to take a while. It's going to make them look the best. Be patient. Don't get too frustrated if you don't if you're doing like this. Don't worry. You can clean it up afterwards. It's not that big of a deal. So, I need to get all that done on all 10 and then I'll come back and we'll work on the sergeant a little bit more especially his face so I'll be back in a couple of seconds for you guys all right so as you can see I have done the highlights on all ten of them at this point but now This is where, as you can tell, I wasn't very careful, but that doesn't really matter because you can always go back with the base color anytime. Make those lines a little bit thinner and stuff. So now is the time for accuracy. That's 
why I got my artificer artificer layers extra small brush out first time I'm going to be using it and I'm also going and just as a note about the helmet I've changed a couple things here I'm not going to be using the corn red I want to do a Mephiston red with an edge highlight of Wild Rider and maybe just grab it here the extreme edge highlight as a pulse layer you can tell those two are very similar so it should create a very nice look just that's just for the helmet on our chest in there but I will give you the color here in two seconds that we're going to be using today that is Parisian gray and all that we're going to do is a very just a very very thick like right in here right at the very sharpest area like on the corners here Maybe a little bit down here on the edges, just a tiny bit, probably down towards the corner here. And maybe in the middle here, just to break it up. But really you want to use this extreme edge, extreme edge highlighting as sparingly as possible. I know he looks very angry right now. With his two extra highlighted eyes there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and clean them up as well. As I do not want them to look like this. I wanted to have just a fine highlight right in there. Just choose out the sharpest areas. Paint that as carefully as you can. That's why I have my artificer brush out. Out of its case. So. I will clean them up and do that extreme edge highlight and I will be back once all that is done. Okay, so after a lot of cleaning up, as you can see here, the captain, he looks a lot cleaner now. We're actually going to focus on the captain here for a minute or two. Now I need to clean this brush a little bit more. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to go over the entire head. Because he is bald as I'll get out. So 
So we're gonna use a base coat. Rock Earth Earth Rock Earth Flash. And I'm also going to base coat the helmet right now as well. For that I'm gonna use Mephiston Red. And I'm also adding, because I just picked it up today, Storm Host, S Storm Host Silver. So, hopefully that is like my other all time favorite one. And I yeah, that's all. That's all I have to say. Gilliman Blue Blaze for our Primark. Rabuti Gilliman, or however you say his name. I know it's a very weird name. Oh, that's all I know. So I am going to do the flash shade and base coat the helmet and I will be back once that is all completed. Okay, so as you can see here, the captain is really coming along, or the sergeant I should say, really coming along. Now. We will go over him with a shade next. Reichland flesh flesh shade. Well, we will do the exact same thing that we did with these guys' as helmets. And do a non oil kind of lining on it. And it looks like I need to clean up his elbow a little bit more. What? How did that? Okay, I'm not even going to ask questions about that. What we're going to use for that... For that... No. Rickman Plush. No oil. There we go. And yeah. So let me go ahead and do all that stuff and I will be back in a minute once that's done. Actually, you know what? I can just do it quickly right now. I just had the flush shade two seconds ago. Where did it go? There it is. That was just me dropping in one of the balls for it. So I'm using my small layer brush. Son of a... Be back in a minute. Alright, so let me see here. I just forgot one tiny part, but I will not worry about it.
So about what just happened? <laughs> I spilled about 90% of my like and flashlight everywhere. Apparently I'm just a big klutz tonight. So yeah, there's only one guy that really got hit by it. But I'm just gonna wait for the shade to dry first. Also he looks like he really wasn't cleaned up all that well, so I'm gonna re clean him up. Redo all that stuff. But my medium shade brush saved me big time. If I didn't have this, yeah, I would only have about like that much. So, it really saved me. But I just did the shade on him oh no yes I did okay so now I am going to go back through with the kiss left blush and I'm just gonna go through it all but I'm gonna leave the darker areas dark and then I'm going to see about this one here this is the Vallejo light blush as an extreme like just as an edge highlight kind of deal so yeah so I will do those two and I will also do an edge highlight for the helmet of Wild Rider Red with the extreme edge highlight of Troll Slayer Orange. As I've already shown you guys that step before, actually in this same vid this same video, which is turning out to be a long video, maybe broken up into two parts. But uh, yeah, you can see the outline of, yeah, that's all like one flash shade now, but that's fine. I needed, I, I knew, I know I still need a lot of it because of Mr. Gillipants that I have. So yeah. I will go ahead do those four things and then I'm trying to decide if we're going to do the black areas of the armor first or if we're going to do the silver still 50 50 so I'll let you guys know when I get to it. So be back in a couple seconds for you guys. Okay, so while I still slightly finish up this guy, which is going really well, we will start base coating. And I should also mention. I did Screaming Skull on the knee there as he is the captain or the sergeant of this squad.
so now we're going to start base coating some of the details like the ribbon and like the back of the legs here and these parts back here and the thrusters and these parts here and actually the belt as well is another big area and the bolter here as well or auto bolter I should say the skull and the skull on this helmet and the purity seal and all that stuff so now we're going to start working on the little details the little things So for the base coat for the ribbon and the purity seals on all 10 of them for the wax part we're going to use a base coat of screamer pink as well let me find it here there it is for the paper part we're going to be doing the black earth slash And there's a couple of weapons that have a little fancy bit on them. We would, you would make sure that they're all, all the black parts are going to be base coated in abandoned black. Silver parts are going to be in, not Eshin gray, lead belcher. There it is, lead belcher. So, remember to keep, even if you get the spray for these guys, get a part of it from Craig Blue, just in case something happens like the shade incident, incident. that happened, I needed my Craig Blue. Okay, so we are back. As you can see, this is one of our normal primaris. Inceptors. I had to do two coats of the Rakar blush. And this back here will give you an idea of what I've done with the bolters. Now that was a mistake. That's actually supposed to be gold. I will rectify that once I do all the gold pieces on them. Like on the chest plate and on the shoulders. <clears throat> so now it's the fun part. Especially on this guy here. Especially on our captain. So all the rock art flesh, all the paper stuff, we'll get a shade of Agrox Earth Shade. All the purple bits on him, we'll get a going over of this one, Kernsberg. Crimson. This is the one I use for my Tyranids. And then for all the silver parts on him, we're going to use Null Oil again. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, especially with the metallics, might be helpful to get an extra water thing or change your water afterwards <clears throat> as metallics especially these ones so hang on two seconds here i'll grab an example
as you can see, this is an, an enamel paint. So you can see all those flecks of copper mixed in with the pigment, which is what creates its shine. That's why they're so hard to shake up sometimes. It's because you're literally dealing with metal. You can see all those tiny little specks moving there. That's all metal pieces. And that is the same for every single metallic paint. Even here, you can see them at the bottom there. That is a Citadel paint, Retributor Armor, which we will be using later on. You know, a couple more clips here. Me, I've been working clips for each step, which you guys can probably tell because there's so many of them for this step, this part. But I've also done the back of his head here. And I've also done his single bullet in the forehead. Now those ones I probably will not do actually. Just because I want to keep them shiny pretty well. So because we're going to be using that and because I've also used one of my small layer brushes I don't want to use it again for metallic because there's probably metal in it still so once I get it really cleaned out then I'll use it but for now I will use my Pro Studio brush my double up or double zero as some people call it, but I call it double lot. To basically take a little bit of each, each one, and then little bits. It's gonna be fun. Just take your time. Don't put too much on at once. Let it dry before putting on more, all that kind of stuff. All the stuff that they preach on Warhammer TV, all which will follow it. And by the way, this big brush is so weird. Yeah, it's double-ended. I didn't know that at the time. I was like, huh, that's a nice big brush. That looks like a nice big brush. Better pick it up. Not until I got home, I realized, oh, yeah, it's two sides. So, it's fun. It's my oddity paintbrush. I like it. So, I'm going to do all that. And then I will bring you guys back to see that result. And then go over all the highlights and fine highlights and all that kind of stuff. You guys know the drill by now. We're almost there. We really are almost there. Right, basically we just got the gold to do and then I'm going to attach all the arms basically we got the eyes lenses and fine highlights and gold parts to do and then the base the base is the easiest actually you guys didn't see this, but I got a whole bunch of sculpting tools from Citadel. And this one is meant for the textured paints. So, I'm going to see how this does. And yes, they are nice metal. Really sharp. Nice metallic metal. Fully metal. Things, so really nice 
these are going to be in conjunction with the Tamiya Poison Party. Yeah. So, I will go ahead and do all the washes, and then I'll bring you guys back once that's all done. So, I'll see you guys in a little bit here. Okay, so now that I've let the shade dry on all the metal parts, and on the board here, and on his bolter and the purity seal. Now we gotta do I've got about one other color here. All the fine detail work. So this is where you got your artificial brush out. Because we're gonna be working in extremely tight spaces. Pretty well, you want to do like a little bit along here. I we'll want to avoid the dark recesses in the head, in the skull there. or on any metallic part avoid all the dark details here do a fine edge highlight as well as do a little outside layer on that one and on the gun just do edge highlighting and on all the black do all the he edge highlighting So there's going to be a lot of edge highlights here. I'm going to run through all the colors you'll need and what, where they will be going. So we have Stormhold Silver, which will go on all the all the silver parts, pretty well, or the metallic parts. Powered Witch Flesh and White Scar. These are going to be for the Purity Seal paper here. And also if you're wanting to write text you're supposed to use my... Let me just see here. It, I know it's a color. Oh man, Rhinox Hide, that's it. I knew it was some kind of almost Pokemon kind of deal. But Rhinox Hide, and just do a little squiggles along it. I'm going to use Doom Ball Brown to hopefully get that same effect. We'll need Emperor's. Children, did we use Creamer Sprink already? Yes, we did. As the for the purity seals, for the purity seals, and on him the cord here. Ashen Gray for all the black part edge highlighting. So I got a lot of edge highlighting to do, so I'm gonna go ahead and do all of that. And just as a note, when you do the Storm Hole Silver, to do the 
eyes of all the helmets. As you notice, I I actually do not have any of the gem or uh, the only glaze I have is for Gilly Man. But I do have Tianmen clear things. So I'm going to be using those in instead of all those fancy glazes and all that kind of stuff. The only reason why I got this one is I do not have a clear blue. I have a yellow, I have a green, I have a red. In theory I could make any color. It's just easier to get this. And he's also supposed to be really shiny armor and yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead, do all those edge highlights, do their eyes, including I will also do his. Seeing as though we have white scar out. So if you're gonna do if you do a guy without a helmet, you will just need a microscopic amount of abandoned black. A microscopic amount. So I'm gonna go ahead, do all that, and then I will bring you guys back when we finally start on all the Aquilas and the shoulders and the rest of it. So I guess if you don't have any of those, you should you might want to consider doing up one of these buttons. And these two probably. Just so then you can do a clear thing over it and make it a shiny button there. So I'll be back once I've done all this. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so we are really close to being done. As you can see, I've done the Stormhole Silver. And all the purity seals and bolters for the Emperor. So, we need to do the eyes on all the space marines, which for this captain, we need to do the eyes in green, which I will be using a clear green by Tiananmen, or Tamiya I should say, Tamiya, yeah. I don't know where I get that all the time. Where? There it is. Oh, don't be there. Right, so sorry about that cut right there. So, this is X27, clear red. And I also have X25, clear green. And I do have a clear yellow as well. Don't know exactly which one that one is, but I swear one day I will not. I will throw the stand against the wall. So, so that, then we will start doing all the gold, like the Aquila on the chest and. Along the edges of the arms and on some of the bolters, they have this guy accidentally did silver already. But I'll be changing that. That right there. 
I need to be gold. So we will start that process. Using Retributor Armor as the base. And you know what? By this point, you guys should know exactly what I'm, what I mean by find the shade and then go over it again with this and that highlighting and find highlights and stuff like that. So I'm just going to tell you all of them right now. So we're going to go over it with the shade right one blush shade, which will help bring out the color, brighten it up, or warm it up, I should say. So then we'll bring back the gold color with Liberator Gold, and then do a fine highlight of Stormhost Silver. I know it's really weird, but yes, it does work. So again, all the eyes for these guys are going to be red, which I'm going to use the clear red for. That's why we put the Stormhost Silver in the eyes first. And also, do you have no? You don't. why we did these which I will be doing in the clear green and this summit right here we're gonna do the eyes in the clear green as well so I will go ahead and do all of that and then I'll bring you guys back for the final step which is the water slide decals which I've already tested it. I know that it will, that Microsoft and Microset do not affect it. We do not have it. I would have been getting it because it, they're two amazing products. Don't do what I've done in the past. I've used clear nail polish. Don't use that. It destroys some, uh, it absolutely destroys Waterside decals. You can get a top coat spray and do that as well. I'm not going to go that far. Oh, and basing. That's another thing we're going to. I'm going to slightly cover it, but you guys have to figure out your own basing way of doing it, and whatever way you do, stick with it. Like 20 years from now be doing the same kind of base. A little bit of variation, but the same sort of base. So I will go ahead and do that. And actually, after, because I wanted to get this center part, let me just get this both there. Focus on the face. They're the exact same different way. There we go. So I wanted to get this uh, the center of their chest done. That's why I have the arms separate. And the number on the bottom. Then I know exactly which one goes with which. But once that is done, I will be super gluing them, their arms on, as I do not want the, to worry about getting the plastic destroyed and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Then we'll bring out everything we need for the water slide so we'll see you guys once we are ready for the water slide decals actually so need a little bit okay so as you can see here 
we have the legion of all 10 space marines or primaris in intercessors however you say it i still don't know <clears throat> ancestors or i know it's something like that here is the squad of all 10 completely painted except for their bases which i will be showing in a which you should do on your own i will just give examples using a couple of the textured paints but now we gotta do water side decals And of course you could do them freehand, as you can see here with one of my space marines, which are which is dwarfed by this guy here, absolutely dwarfed, looks like a little dwarf compared to this 10 man squad. But, as you can see here, it has a lot of different stuff. Now this is where a codex is actually going to be pretty helpful to you. Because, the gold on the shoulder means that these guys are from the second, either, let me just double check before I say something off as I have my products here all this info is on board page 14 so it is the second company So, what you will need is a separate clean water container. I have one that I just use for water play decals. As my Gundams that I build. That's a Gundam right up there. That's a Gundam. That's an RX Zero Gundam Unicorn. So yes, but you can also see, which is really nice, that they've actually labeled each decal area here. So close support, fire support, battle line, veteran, commander, command, chapter, honor marking, campaign badges. All that stuff is here, which is really handy. So what you will need as I say that I realize I don't have I, I know I had it out. that one
There it is. You will need a blade. The sharp blade. The decals. Something to cut on. Like a cutting mat or something like that. Which I'm actually thinking about getting an even bigger cutting mat sometime. And imagine your your um, codex might be helpful, but if you know it, you know it already. A pair of tweezers. I like the self-closing kind. So when I push down, it opens. Opens and closes. You will need a brush. It doesn't matter if it's a good brush, it doesn't matter if it's a bad brush. This has to be a brush. I'm going to use this brush. My 5 art artist, Artist's Loft. And I recommend some kind of setting solution. Like Microset and Microsoft. This is very optional. Yeah, this is. I'm not sure if it's a black coat or if it's a shiny coat. But either way, it'll help protect the decals. I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna try it. See how it works. So I'm also gonna need another brush for that, which I'm gonna do a small layer brush. So why am I using a brand new one when I can use the other one I've been using for a bit? Let's see, there it is. And some people like to use the brush, some people like to do stuff. I do decals my own way. So I like one of these cottontail cocktail toothpick kind of deals. I use a cotton, cotton bud, ear cleaner, ear swab, whatever you say it as, in your area. I, I got a, a whole thing of 300 of them for like 4 bucks, so they're dirt cheap. And some paper towel. Just remember this is not good paper towel on. This will do. So, you kind of want to have a wet side and a dry side. So this is what I'm going to call a dry side. My decals are over here, so I should not cross. The only time I should be crossing over to this side is when I'm putting on a decal. I know that sounds really weird, but to have the water away and in a secure container, when I have it in a tub or a container. And it does have a lid as well, but I took off the lid as so I'm going to be doing some decals. So, um, 
going to save you for a bit. I want to grab you here. As you can see, this is our marine. So, and this is also where this can come into play. So I'm going to have these guys as battle line. Primaris. Space Marines. So they're going to have the arrow on an arrow here with the number two on it. And on this one, the Ultramarines. Seal on it. Yeah, so let's do that. So, what I'm gonna do quickly off camera is cut out one of the battle lines. The battle line on this shoulder. Symbols. Now play with the light a little bit. Make sure that you don't cut any other decals when you're doing this or decals. Should be saying decals because it is decals, not decals. Decals are stickers, decals are water slide. see it there as you can see I have that arrow and I want to dunk it and I cut it so that it's not it's a little bit away from the edge of the transfer so and I only dunk it in for about 10 seconds As you can see here, it's also kind of changed color there, as you can see. Now, because the glue is on the top layer of the paper, you don't want to leave it in the water. That's one thing that really gets on my nerves is when people say, oh, just leave it in the water till it comes off. No. We do not want to do that as it can remove some of the glue and then that would actually make the decal roll off eventually unless you put a top coat on it like almost immediately So in theory, it should be almost there. Let me just check it here. And if it's not, if it looks dry, you can always just dunk it in quick. Okay, so now it is starting to move. 
So now is the time where you grab your micro set, as you can tell. Yeah. I don't have a lot of it left. Except for I have a whole other bottle of it right beside me as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lightly go over this shoulder with it with the micro set. Now with the micro set it pre prepares the surface for the de <clears throat> the decal. Now if you're really really picky you could put a gloss coat on it beforehand. As you can see there, that wet spot is all micro set. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. There we go. Hopefully, you guys can hear me. So, what I'm gonna do. Close up my micro set a little bit here. Grab my toothpick. What I'm doing is just going to get the decal onto the shoulder. Just get it on. Now I'm just going to take it off camera because I'm dumping a whole bunch of stuff. And I just gently moved it into place. Now what I'm going to do, take my Q-tip. I know this is off camera, but I really need to work on this. I'm going to very lightly roll it Jesus Okay, so as you can see, doesn't look very good. Which I was kind of hoping it would look a little bit better than that. But I'm going to use Microsol. What Microsol does is dissolve actually the decal a little bit. and helps it conform to any shape. So now I'm, I have to leave this guy alone. Let it completely dissolve, let it completely evaporate. Probably do another couple coats on it. And then repeat that whole process over and over and over and over again until I get all these guys done. So, I'll bring you back for a quick go over on the basing. And then, you will see, then after that, we will see what they look like. So, see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so as you can see here, it took quite a long time for it actually to dry. Like I'm talking, I'd give it, I'd give it a good couple hours to be honest with you. So I'd have something else going on in the background as well. 
like me, I'm working on the next part of the Turn Red Astray Gundam as I'm working on it, so. So at this point, I am just going to add just a tiny little bit of this Ireland Badlands. Really shook it up really well right there. And I'm just going to do the very, just this front little bit right along here. Just a little bit. Just to tie in with this a little bit better. Well, that, that really mixed up what you can see. All that, it looks like they added sand or something to it. But that's the way it's supposed to look, so. And because I'm only going to add a little bit, I'm just going to use this end of it. I'm just going to let that dry and I'm going to do the exact same thing to all of them so but you can see also you see this is kind of a thinner area here whereas this was a big bit thicker here so just something to keep in mind when you're doing your basing so I will be back in a bit I don't know how long so this doesn't usually take as long to dry so 15 20 ish minutes maybe maybe half an hour I don't know I'll let you know see you back in a few minutes Okay, so now that the shade is completely dry. There we go. We are going to go over it with a dry brush. A parent skull. So basically, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, it is a very dry paint. Pretty well, it's just pigment with a tiny bit of moisture in it. Into my breath, get off mo almost all of it. There we go. So my brush kind of looks something like this. 
and then this just catches the edges of all of all those edges. again with the shade so this one I'm going to do a little bit heavier fire brushing than we're really supposed to let's grab a different one here This is more what you're looking for. Where it just catches the edges, where it leaves that shade and all that stuff. So if this is what you're looking for. Not this. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of them like that quickly. Or I like that second one, hopefully. Quickly here and... Then I will bring you guys back. Okay. We'll put this up right over here a little bit better for you guys. So you can just see how it's just on the raised edges. Now, this is when you will, I have a little Dixie cup that I've cut, going to put a little bit of Elmer's glue, and I'm going to get my block all ready here. And of course, a very cheap brush. This is just a disposable brush that I'll get rid of afterwards pretty well. Basically what I'm going to do Take a little Little bit of glue
and then Put some of the block on. And then I'll just wait for it to dry. And then I'll remove the excess. So the next time you see these guys, they will be completely finished. So let me just do that and then that will be everything be back in a moment okay I have finished the first squadron of ultramarines So, I would like to thank everyone for watching this very long series. I don't know how I'll break it up, but if you are new here to and you've liked what you've seen, hit that subscribe button and if you are one of the veterans of the long war here of the great campaign so if you're a veteran of the long campaign here hit that like button if you've liked what you've seen and until next time, remember to rock on.